Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.05 p.m. and take a quick roll call. Dylan? I'm here. Uh, Hallie? Here. And I'm here, so three here and two absent. And we have a quorum, so we can go on ahead. Um, okay, public comment. This, this is general public comment unrelated to anything on the agenda. If you have something like that to say, please raise your hand using the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. Anyone here? No attendees. Have no, no attendees, okay. All right, moving on. So licenses, special short-term liquor licenses. And these are all, uh, Steve, top of the campus. These are from UMass, these are all UMass, right? Yep, so this is just- Except um, for Gabrielle's. Another, yeah, except for the last one, the, the, these are all just kind of part of the same batch from last time, um, just events in the Fine Arts Center and Bowker Auditorium. Okay. All right, so does um, anyone have any questions? Steve forwarded some helpful maps and license application examples. If none, shall we just, do we do Gabrielle separately? I yeah, would. let's do that. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right. So is there a motion to approve SST-23-46 through 46, 47, through 51? So moved. Thank you, Dylan, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote, Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye, that is three to zero with two absent. Uh, those licenses have been approved. And next up is SST-23-52, which is the Amherst bid. Uh, this is Bantober, right, Steve? And this is the same as last year? Another Bantoberfest, I believe the same as it's been run the last two years. Um, Gabrielle was unable to make it today, fortunately, because the block party is right now. So mm -hmm. um, she did send an email along um, with some explanations, but I believe it will be pretty much the same as it has been the last two times. Okay, great. Um, everybody look at Gabrielle's little note and any questions, any issues? If not, is there a motion to approve the short-term license for Ben Tober? So moved. Thank you, Dylan. Second. Second. Thank you, Hallie. Further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Uh, Dylan? Aye. Hallie? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. Um, the license has been approved. Okay, discussion topic. So Steve, what's going yes. on with Hazel's? So I was able to speak with Junior, uh, the owner of Hazel's, uh, a couple times this week. Um, and uh, he passed along. He, uh, he is looking for a new location. He'd like to stay in Amherst if he, if he could. Um, his pickings are kind of slim out there. Unfortunately, we actually have a, a very high uh, occupancy rate for um, restaurant commercial units or even anything that could be could be used as a restaurant um, but he he is looking and um, you know I talked to him about uh, you know the ramifications of um, of you know of licenses and how uh, you know the ABCC does have guidance that the um, there needs to be uh, you know the control of the premises to hold the license and that the board um, you know is unable to issue any other licenses for his former location while well, he still holds this license and um, he did elect to um, surrender the license, and I will um, pull up this. Uh, I will pull up his email right now. If you give me a second. Steve, thank you for taking the time to continue reaching out to yes. him. Yes, um, it's very. Thank you, Ali. It's very sad to see him go, and I, I hope we. I hope he's able to find a, another location somewhere, but. Um, you know, thankfully, we do have uh, eight all alcohol licenses available. So if he is able to find another location, um, he should be able to go right through the application process and and uh, get one 
not a problem. Oh, great. That's good news. I only I only ate there once, but I will say his food was very good. I, uh, oh, yeah? It was very good. Hmm. You take it for granted. You're like, oh, it'll be there. I'll eat there again sometime. And it was unique, too. You know, mm -hmm. not that we, we have nothing but good Mex Mexican restaurants in town. They're all good. But, uh, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of variety. Okay, so um, so that's he will be giving up the liquor license, surrendering the liquor license. So what do we do? Uh, the board could uh, could vote to to accept the surrender. Okay. Um, is there a motion to accept the surrender of the ha liquor license for Hazel's Blue Lagoon? So yeah, moved. Like, thank you, Dylan. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, we'll just take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye, three to zero with two absent. Um, the surrender of the liquor license for Hazel's Blue Lagoon has been accepted. So thanks again, Steve. And we hope that uh, he will be back soon and then he finds another spot okay um great so marijuana regulation that was dylan and gaston what is going on over there yep so i um had a very long talk with uh, Alyssa brewer on this topic kind of about oh, the history right. that's been going on at ccc uh what had was gaining traction what lost traction and now it's kind of lost to the sands of time and have to be redone from scratch again it sounds like oh really uh, yeah it sounded like uh from a little bit of the history i was hearing about that there was some discussion of um uh like a recreational use facility marijuana there were certain towns that were volunteering to uh kind of be pilot programs to state i guess amherst was among those and that all kind of fell through and that's kind of gone nowhere. And what I'm thinking, and the, the, after this long talk, takeaway of a direction I think I'm gonna be going with marijuana regulations. And you can all tell me if uh, you think differently, but I think it's gonna be very, very similar to just the way we regulate alcohol. Our, uh, I think our regs are gonna be pretty bare bones in the sense of we're asking who you are, telling you what your fee is, you're gonna be telling us, you know, what your hours are, what your locations are, all that kind of basic information. Because from what I could find, you know, I, I did try to reach out to the folks over at Red Cardinal and I couldn't really get in touch with them in any meaningful way. Um, but I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to put forward, you know, regulation that's just already what the state says, especially as I think that's kind of in flux. Um, so I'm thinking, probably pretty bare bones in the regulation. If something that there's kind of glaring that maybe, oh, we should include, you know, say this, um, mm -hmm. we can, like if we wanted to say something like, you know, it can't be this distance from this type of building, you know, stuff like that's already included, I believe in, um, in state regulation of how close it can be to a school building, sort of all that stuff. Um, so I'm, my approach to this is gonna be, I'm gonna be putting together something that's pretty pretty bare bones and if somebody thinks you guys have a suggestion of why that might not be a good approach i'm open to it otherwise i think next meeting you guys are going to be getting uh that's what's going to be on the uh on the table what do we think i think it's uh, a great idea oh yeah sorry go ahead Hanley. i was gonna say the only thing we encountered and it was before your time when we were taking the porta license away mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that it's nice to have some sort of guideline for infractions is part of that bare bones because we kind of felt like we were not lost at sea, but that there was no precedent for what we were doing. I, uh, I agree. And I, I appreciate you mentioning that because now that I think about it for even just a moment, I'm like, yeah, that, that kind of falls into bare bones of making sure that we do have kind of, you know, what is our, um, you know, reprimand structure in there of, of what happens for violation. So yeah, I will definitely include that. 
Uh, I think, again, I'll be looking to kind of what we've done with alcohol in that manner as well. Um, but I think kind of the big ones are going to be setting fee structure. I'll probably work with that on Steve because now that we are all well informed, it can only be for the administrative cost of it. Um, and I think it's all going to be um, the regulations, if we should we adopt them, would kind of be contingent on passing with the bylaw that it would go into effect once we also adopt the bylaw and perhaps perhaps do away with host community agreements should the state go that direction. So um, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, if you guys think of anything else that should kind of be included in there, I'll go ahead, I'll put something together and then have that for everybody. And then if we want to just make you know some amendments to it, I think that would work, but I think I, I should be able to have that together by our next meeting. That sounds uh, great. I, I think keeping it simple is a good idea and also including the um, what might go wrong, Allie, you know, like how to. Uh, and then also yeah. one other thing I know Steve has mentioned before helps too to say what we're looking for when we grant a license to. It just yes. gives, I'm not going to say cover, but kind of a framework to look at when we have applications. Doesn't have to be huge, but if you look, um, there are like there's a statute for granting alcohol licenses. What they look for, it's in the guidelines. So you mm -hmm. might want to use that language because I would guess if there's litigation, the courts would probably mm -hmm. use similar term terminology. I uh, yes, I, I plan on kind of doing almost a, a copy and paste, changing alcohol to marijuana and just making sure it fits. Um, I know, Steve, I'd reach out to you to see about getting some of that info, but I know uh, you are a, uh, a busy man who is <laughs> in demand. Um, but anything you could even send me on this topic too between now and the next meeting would be very helpful um, just so I can, you know, don't have to, to reinvent the wheel on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, we can definitely um, touch base on that. And Howie, you know, we did put together that great uh, liquor license um, regulations last mm -hmm. year. Um, I would I would just kind of caution that a lot of um, a lot of what goes into liquor is just kind of state regulations that we inherit. So it wouldn't be built into our regulations. It would just be kind of, um, you know, from patchwork of CMRs or state laws or just kind of practice. So we'd want to make sure to kind of add add some of that. Um, like all the, the notice and everything I believe is in our regulations that's prescribed by state law. So we can take a look at that, but yeah, we should uh, schedule a time to talk next week and go over some things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't have any objection to putting in to reiterating state law uh, in our regulations, just for the reason of making it more simple for applicants. But uh, the only reason why I'm, I'm more hesitant to do that with marijuana is I don't want to mirror today's state regs. And then as those change for, you know, whatever reasons. Now we kind of have cumbersome regulations when the state decided to, you know, ease up on certain things. Like I know when this was all first coming, I remember when uh, Red Cardinal came to us at CBA, they had to have a whole parking man parking management plan involving somebody to wave on traffic and all, all that stuff that now today would be ridiculous to, to make somebody do that because um, it's just kind of a regular business now. Um, but I think something that, you know, obviously is, is going to be staying in state regs um, or that we just think is a good idea currently in state regs. I, I wouldn't mind reiterating it in our um, local regulations as well. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Dylan. Um, so we can look forward to that at the next meeting. Um, any other questions for Dylan about this? Super. Okay. Fantastic. Sounds good. Um, Next up, uh, uh, lunch carts and food trucks on Prey Street, followed by lunch cart and food truck regulation. And Steve, you've been meeting with lots of people about this, correct? Yeah, so I did meet with, um, you know, I've been meeting with a lot of people individually, but last week I was able to meet with um, the representatives of the police and fire department and the DPW as well as the town manager and just kind of went over, um, you know, what we have been thinking and going over and uh, the ideas. And there was definitely some support to, try that out. So I think Paul would be willing to um, accept an idea for a uh, conceptual plan for the, you know, maybe call Food Truck Fridays program or something like that. Maybe start it off on Fridays um, as a pilot and see how it goes. Um, so I have um, prepared that and I thought we could kind of go over it together and 
see what else uh, what else we may want to add. Uh, okay. But I have a there it is. Look at that. So I have uh, this is kind of the conceptual layout for the site. Okay. And so we'd want to make sure the trucks are kept um, up against the, the side here so that there can be fire department access through here. Maybe mm -hmm. queuing can take place going down this way so that um, the sidewalk won't be too crowded, but the fire department could get through pretty easily if, if there was an emergency. And um, we do have uh, this conceptual plan too. So I'm happy to hear what you guys think we should add to this, if anything. But I tried to just kind of capture what our discussions have covered. So... Um, and our concept, you know, and their role as the licensing authority for the town of Amherst um, is kind of talking about, um, you know, what the Board of License Commissioners does and um, the history of kind of revising the lunch cart food truck regulations um, and the experiment last spring with the late night, but how there was um, some concern that uh, the um, it was a little too close to residential neighborhoods and how that idea kind of came up to put it onto uh, Prey Street um, and talking about the authority implementation. So... Uh, we started out just as a temporary pilot program to evaluate safety, success, and the impacts. Um, so uh, under Section 5.03 of the Lunch Cart Food Truck Regulations, Rob, the building commissioner, is authorized to um, approve uh, short-term lunch cart food truck license applications um, in the municipal parking district, which this is. And since it would just be a pilot program, um, he, could, he could approve those with the, with the support of the board. Um, and then the, um, the closure of the public way, the town council controls that. And I believe there's authority delegated to the town manager um, for short term temporary events. And, um, you know, we could certainly try that out for, you know, I think it's up to 14 days. We could certainly try this out for a couple of weeks and on Fridays and see how it goes. And then maybe kind of circle back and see what the next steps are. And then just kind of covering some of the operation here, uh, hours of operation, the roads would be closed at 7.30. Uh, allowing the food trucks to get to, to arrive and uh, set up their internal equipment. The food service would begin at uh, 8.30 and continue until 2 o'clock when they would break down their equipment and begin clean up the area, and the road would reopen at 3 o'clock. Uh, site safety, the area of Prey Street would be blocked off with sawhorses and metal barriers. Um, the Amherst Police Department would do the road closure and opening. Um, the trucks, you know, we, we talked about that uh, earlier. Um, for sanitation, they'd always be required to provide trash cans and recycle bins to their customers. Um, I think sanitation is a challenge. It's in terms of policing litter. Uh, the person who was mostly operating in, on Kendrick Park last spring was um, really good about going out to do to go and do litter. And there's a risk of kind of a tragedy, the commons type situation where you know it's easy you know it's easier for one person to kind of say, well, that definitely all came from my truck and clean it up. But if we had more than one. There could be a challenge, so I think the board will have to be really strict with um, requiring the food truck operators to kind of collaboratively clean everything up and make sure that gets done. Um, and uh, they'll be asked to provide minimum packaging with their food to minimize the potential for litter. Uh, the DPW might, you know, if, if need be, install additional public trash cans along common pedestrian corridors, leaving the site to make sure that the trash is deposited in containers instead of being littered. Um, noise mitigation they wouldn't be allowed to play music or use any kind of speakers or amplifiers um, they're always asked to use battery powered um, or advanced modern or battery power or advanced modern generators that have a minimal sound signature and fumes um, and future goals if the pilot proves successful the program will also be expanded to operate on saturday nights and uh, a priority of the program continued to be to allow electrical hookups for the trucks to minimize noise and carbon emissions So this is something the board could um, put its imprimatur on, and and um, I can pass it along to the town manager, and um, you know he could potentially begin um, one of these upcoming weekends. Um, That's great. Point. It is. It is fantastic. Um, just the sanitation. So, do we have so the the food trucks that they would have? Do they know? Would you tell them about this program and say, hey, you can be here till two o'clock, and then would we have a chance to? I guess you can tell them about that they have to collaborate on making sure that it's clean. Is yeah, I mean, I think we would is that reach way you're out. Seeing it? I think we would reach out to anybody with a existing license, um, okay. you know, either health or or um, or uh, 
license commission license and let them know this is available and um you know we'll have to kind of take a look at uh you know kind of managing you know time you know who gets to come when if we get start to get more demand right or spots but okay and can, so that site can only i saw three food trucks it can only hold three at this point that's um and you know talking with the public safety departments and um the town manager i think that's uh that seems like a a good amount to start out okay and then can they still park over by kendrick um with this or with that with this supplement that like but they wouldn't uh well nobody would be um any existing authorizations would continue i don't believe i think there was one recently that we just approved for up to 2 a.m right yes she had a what did she do she had shoes from somewhere Sir? in springfield yeah, maybe that yeah. was. Oh no, it was soups and sandwiches. Soup, that's um, right, yes, soups and yes. sandwiches. That's what it was. Yep. Yes. So, like, so, say we had four people and three of them show up, and somebody else decides to go over to Kendrick. Can, is that still? Well, her okay. existing, um, her existing approval, you know, stands. Um, okay. But yes, oh, but some of them board. expired, right? Yeah, the other ones were all just authorized temporarily in this. Okay. So, right. Um, something the board would, you know, consider as if they want to, you know, if this if this does, you know catch on and continue you know if they want the board want to continue doing that okay over there so we would have to authorize these anyway they have to just turn up and or at least is that right or can we just do it so for for right now i mean this is just going to be a temporary pilot program okay um, and um the board so covers sorry oh go ahead no go ahead go ahead so the board would just have to um you know approve this uh this conceptual plan and pass along to the town manager and and thankfully just the way the regulations are written rob has the ability to uh, administratively approve uh temporary events in the in the municipal parking district which this is so we would just be able to administratively approve um whichever one truck oh okay i got it all right okay nights. gotcha and i mean i think i think we should try it and see and it yeah. might be that we need more space and you know someone with kids maybe the hours would be expanded too at some point okay yeah, I, think, yeah. I think definitely sorry dylan go ahead i was gonna say something also to, to think about is i think if we have food trucks right there i think this might actually be popular we should probably come up with um some idea of how we determine uh what ones get there and i th the only thing that comes to mind is uh preference for variety so if you know five people applied for three spots and you know two of them are I don't know, ice cream trucks or something. I it's I think it's it would be kind of implied that we'd only be picking one ice cream truck. Like maybe just putting in something like that. Um should should it be should we be so lucky that it gets so popular? I was gonna say you maybe mention that there's off site Kendrick Park with an application through us. Yeah, well, well we did mention up here that part of the reason um to consider moving over to Prey Street was just kind of concerned that Kendrick Park might be a little bit too close to the neighborhood. So, right, um, it, so. it is right outside a residential home with a generator, and it's not super loud, but I, I can't imagine it's it's quiet either. Um, because I've I've heard it, and it's like I, I I'm glad it's not right outside my room. So, oh yeah, okay. Well, let's get it up and running. And the best case scenario is actually that we have too many food trucks, and we have to figure out where to put them that's right okay so do we just need a motion to approve the conceptual plan yeah just with any um i think there was a couple of notes you guys had for me here so i'll yes. just make those and permission to make any other couple other tweaks if i see anything um, okay but yeah just approve the, the general conceptual plan and i will pass that along okay with Ooh. current and uh possibly future emendations yeah so just um just an idea Okay. Just an idea for now, but we'll we'll see um, if it can move forward. I think the, the there was a, the the police and fire and DPW and town manager were all supportive of giving it a try. So great, I'll definitely great. keep you guys updated on where that goes. Okay. So do we need to vote on it? I mean, you could approve it by consensus. I don't know if it needs to be a formal motion. Okay. Are we all in consent? All. I like it. All in favor? I think it's okay. great. All right, Super pass it on, Steve. Yeah. Good. All right. Thanks so much for doing that. Great work. Great. So, Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Um, looking forward to that.
Um, okay. Oh, okay. So that covers, um, now we're into upcoming meetings and agendas. So next up we have, Oct oh my gosh, October already. October 5th, uh, Thursday at five o'clock. That works for everybody. And then we have Dylan, your marijuana regulations and yep. possibly is Gaston still working on the bylaw? Yep, last I checked. Okay. And then do we have anything else? Oh, I guess um we'll hear another update on the lunch carts. Mm -hmm. And um I can't think of any other discussion items that we're working on. Is there anything else coming up, Steve? Like um the new license application for the spot where hazels was that may come in yeah i think they would they would they're they are working on that okay all right um anything else and then let's say we have the 5th of october and then the 19th and then meetings for october um and if there are no nothing else for upcoming meetings and agendas topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting any topics no. Okay. And next up is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I will make the motion, but before we adjourn, uh, will I see any of you guys over at the block party after this? Who's oh, yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are very excited. Yeah. Excellent. Well, all right, then. I'll hopefully see you all there. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Hallie. Um, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And um, I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. We're adjourned at 5.31 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. See you on the fifth. All right. Bye-bye.